Hello guys, and welcome back to the Novice Lumberjack, where I am still up in New Hampshire at uh, this lovely old home that uh, my wife's family is uh, about to let go of. And it's, uh, it's sad, right? It, but it's, uh, it's lovely. But while I was up here, I got to go see Ryan. He is one of my the channel viewers. And a couple months ago, I purchased a pair of chainsaws off of him, and I went and got them. He was, I can't tell you how fun it was to meet another chainsaw enthusiast. Uh, all of the, the numbers, you know, all of the uh, 372 XP, 670 champ, uh, 630, 2152, which is a 2153, which is also pretty much a 2150. Uh, which is also a 345, a 346 XP, 350, 353, Red Max 5300. They're all the same saw, you know, that kind of banter. Uh, and being able to meet somebody that knew that. And he was a, a just genuinely good guy. It's uh, it, it was fun. And hopefully I'll go back there tomorrow or the next day because he says he knows where there is an old John Surrett dealership, uh, and the the uh, gentleman still keeps the doors open, and uh, I guess he's retired, and he just likes to go out there and sit and keep this keep the shop open. So I am, can't wait to go see that. I uh, can't wait. But look at the saws that I got. These are absolutely legendary, and we're gonna see. We're gonna break into them and see what they're all about. Ta-da! Let me get to where you can see a little bit better. This is the legendary partner 5000 plus. Now the 5000 and the 5000 plus from what I've read are pretty much identical. There's uh, who knows? I don't think that there's any difference in the piston and cylinder. Uh, I don't think there's any difference in the carburetor. It could be something as simple as the 5000 plus got this nifty little brace i'm not sure it could just be simply marketing or there could be a real difference such as the muffler or something along those lines i don't know but this is a 1983 model i love how it says it right there nifty and on the tag as you'll notice it just says 5000 so it might be a 5000 but it's just got a top cover from a 5000 plus I don't know, but the good thing is, is I just took the mu muffler off and I looked at the uh, piston and cylinder and it is pristine. It is absolutely pristine and that is what is really important. Pretty nifty little thing, look at this, right here is your oiler, your bar oiler to increase and decrease. These were, I think a 50cc saw, but they could have been a 49cc saw, I'm not sure, but um, uh, more research in the next video on them. I will be ready to tell you guys about that. And this is great. I'm really happy about this. I can finally put it up against uh, things to see where it compares. Because so much of these saws is, 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 is legend. Stuff of legends. People talk about them, how they were just the hottest little 50cc saw that you could ever get your hands on. And, well, it came out almost 40, well, it came out over 40 years ago, I believe. I believe this came out in 1978. But the point that I'm making is, is most people can't put their hands on one. They, they're extremely difficult to get. And, and so we're, we hear all this talk about how these were the number one race saw in the 50cc class all right people did all kinds of cool stuff these partners had a tendency to break their uh, uh recoil starter as you can see this one's already had some trouble and so what people would do is they would take the the piston and cylinder off of this and put it on a husky uh 50 model or 51 or 55 that way you had the bottom end that was easy to get parts for but you still had that really good high performance piston and cylinder really nifty stuff but we don't know if it's all myth or if these were really that good of a saw so um, it's really cool to get a chance to actually put hands on one and then i will be doing tests 
where I can put it against more modern saws. Things that uh, that we know uh, we can get our hands on and we go, wow, a saw from 1978 or 1983, you know, a 78 design can really compete with, say, a Husqvarna 550XP or a steel, uh, what is it, I think it's 261. You know, can it actually compete with that? Or is it all just, you know, a whole bunch of hype? Um, either way, it's a cool saw, and I'm extremely happy to get it. Thank you, Ryan. But, the really cool one. Same saw. Better dressed. This right here is the Johnson Red 490. And it is almost identical to the partner. Um... You know, this was back whenever uh, Electrolux first bought, they bought, what, who did they buy? They bought Pioneer, they bought Partner, they bought Pullen, they bought uh, Johnson Red, they bought Husqvarna, and um, all kinds of things were happening, and they, they liked to merge things together. And uh, this is one of those conglomerations. But the cool thing about Johnson Red, right, is that even though this is not a Johnson Red design, this is a Partner design right partner offered this same saw in a 500 which was an open port design and uh, more of a farm ranch saw this is definitely more a professional limbing saw um well the cool thing about the johnson red is johnson red is so high class right it, yeah johnson red johnson red is the gentleman of chainsaw john sared is james bond in a tuxedo <laughs> you know the his, john sared is awesome and so what they did was they said yeah we want the same saw because it's a great saw right but we don't we don't even want the open port version we have nothing but the hot hot rod and so they had the uh just like this was a five thousand or a 5,000 plus, and there was really no differences. Then the Johnson Red had the 490 and the 590. And again, I am pretty sure that there was no real difference with these. It might have been something little, um, such such as maybe a carburetor difference or, or, or maybe a, a one-piece coil versus a two-piece coil. I'm not sure yet, and I'll learn more about them as I go. But the piston and cylinder, I believe was exactly the same on the 490 and the 590. I don't, you know, it's not like one was 49 cc's and the other one was 59 cc's. I don't think that there was even I don't think that there was even the difference of 49 to 51 cc's. I think they were exactly the same piston and cylinders. But they only got the good high performance closed port whereas this you could also get it in the lower performing um, lower RPM open port cylinder. And so that's one of the things that I, I look at when, that's why I like John's Red so much is they're so high performance and so nice. The devil is in the details with them. And whenever somebody back in 1983 showed up with a 50 CC yellow partner, then there was a chance that they were just a farmer or a rancher and didn't have the actual pro shell, pro saw whereas if you saw this you knew this was the real deal because the john's red was only the high performing models and it's very cool this one um he had sent me pictures of a little scoring on the cylinder but i've opened it up and looked you know this one the p partner was absolutely pristine, the piston and cylinder. And this one, what looked to be like scoring in the pictures, was really just simply a, a almost a staining of the piston. It really was nothing at all. It was so mild. Now, I will go ahead and most likely I'll open it up and clean up the bore a little bit with some Scotch-Brite. And I'll rub on the piston a little bit with the scotch Bright, And then I'll just put a new ring on it. Because a ring is very cheap and easy to get. And, um, and I want to take care of these. I'll probably go overhead and immediately throw new crank seals in them. And um, intake gaskets if I can find them. Things like that. So I can ensure that there won't be an intake leak that will fry one of, these, one of these hard to come by piston and cylinders. And... 
I hope that you can hear from my voice. I am extremely excited about them. And, uh, yeah, I've waited for one of these things for like three or four years. They just, nothing, there's never any of them down in, uh, uh, in Atlanta area. And if you do find one, you know, people are asking $300 for them. And, uh, you know, I just don't want to do that. Uh, it's, you know, it's a hobby, uh, for me. And even if I was a professional, professional lumberjack or tree service guy, climber, whatever, I wouldn't be taking one of these on the job with me. So anyways, uh, look forward to the next video because whenever I first met Ryan, I, I wanted to film it, but, um, we were talking so much and so fast that, uh, I didn't have, I felt like the camera would be bad. And plus, you know, a lot of people don't want to be filmed and stuff, but I, I, I reached out to him afterwards. Uh, he, all of his stuff is in his grandfather's barn and just the barn is an absolute treasure trove you'll love to see it there's all kinds of stuff just ain't antique tools antique boat motors uh to lots of chainsaws lots of cool ones he's got a really cool little pioneer uh and he said it's a 51 cc saw but it's tiny tiny i mean it's like the size of a split pea it's <laughs> it, it's it's so small but it's still 51 cc's oh I'm, I'm going to go. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.